Hi there, my name is Dr. Lisa Blue, and I'd like to talk to you today about the information we can get from our ExamSoft Strengths and Opportunities Report. So the exam is over. Whether you feel good about the results or bad about the results, the chance to increase your overall chemistry knowledge and improve your general chemistry score hasn't passed you up. As soon as the full ExamSoft results are released, and a blank copy of the exam is available, it's a great idea to work through the entire exam again to make a study guide for the final exam. Once the Director of General Chemistry has released the full exam results on the ExamSoft website, we can also look at where we're doing well, where we need a little review, and where we need significant improvement. Let's look first at how to interpret the results from your individual exam questions. Let's look first at question number five. The first thing we notice is that the instructor wrote some notes about the content of the question. This isn't something you see on the exam, but it might show up on the report afterwards. The next thing we see is the actual question itself. And we see here that it's a fill in the blank question and we are instructed to answer to two significant figures. Now, the cool thing is, check this out. We've got an answer to two significant figures written in scientific notation, and it's green. That means that we got this answer correct. We can see that our score is on top. We scored a possible one out of one points, and then the average for the rest of the 105 students is listed underneath. So the average score was a 0.31 out of one. Must have been a pretty tough question. If we look at question six, we see again, there's some instructor notes. And we see that we're asked to write the metric prefix associated with each multiplier or meaning. So here's blank number one, blank number two, blank number three. And we see that we got answer number one correct, but number two threw us for a loop. We answered DESI. We can see after our answer, all of the acceptable answers were then listed, including any misspellings that might have shown up. So for this reason, our score on this one is only 0.67 out of 1, which is just slightly below the class average. Now, we see that on question 7, we've got this big red warning sign. So we need to work on this one because we got this completely wrong. Notice the 0 out of 1 when about half the class got that right. It says, use scientific notation and calculations. We've got another fill in the blank here. And we have to report our answer to three significant figures. We did use three significant figures, but somewhere we went wrong in our calculations. We see again a list of all the acceptable answers. And so using these acceptable answers, we can go back and try to figure out where we went wrong. Once we understand the questions we got correct, the questions that need a little review, and the questions we got wrong, it's time to step back and look at the overall exam report. In our Strengths and Opportunities report, we tag questions using four general categories. We look at the format of the question, the type of question, the level of difficulty, and the learning outcomes from these specific topics in the lecture. In our first set of categories, we're looking at fill in the blank, matching, multiple answer, and multiple choice type questions. Multiple answer doesn't tell us a whole lot of information. It just means there was more than one answer to be given for a question. And we see that students typically dislike fill in the blank the most of all question types. I want to encourage you all to be brave though. Study, study hard, study thoroughly, and trust that you're coming into these exams equipped with the knowledge and skills to solve these problems. When you get into the real world, there isn't going to be that safety net of multiple choice, sometimes called multiple guess answers. So don't be afraid of fill in the blank. You've got this. The next category contains conceptual, numeric, and calculation type questions. When you're studying, 
most people think of conceptual questions as flashcard type questions. A lot of students are afraid of the calculation type questions, especially if you're coming in with a weak math background or you really, really, really don't like word problems. I want to encourage you in your studies to try and connect the concepts to your calculations. That'll help you with your calculations, it'll help you memorize the concepts, and it'll keep you from memorizing these equations by rote memory. Our level of difficulty category is based on Bloom's taxonomy. As we're moving away from a 1-2-3 number system, with 1 being the easiest and 3 being the hardest, we're trying to work more with these Bloom's taxonomic terms, such as remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, and evaluating. It's really hard to go higher than evaluating on an exam soft type test. So look for creating to be on another type of evaluation tool. Now we've come to what I think is probably the most important piece of information from our Strengths and Opportunities report. You'll see here that we label these categories with numbers that correspond to the sections of material from the OpenStax textbook. Where there's more than one learning outcome in a section, we'll then offer a brief description of what we're going for with that particular question. What I notice with students is that they tend to have a run of wrong answers. We're going to see a needs improvement or needs review marker. And what this tells us is that it'd be a good idea to go back and make sure that we fully understand the material in this particular section. It often takes no more than two or three poorly understood learning outcomes to derail an otherwise perfectly good exam. I hope you found this information useful, but if you still have questions, please talk to your instructor or your recitation TA. If you're looking for tips and tricks on how to study for questions based on the category, they can also be a great resource. Happy studying!